Okay, YouTube, it is Friday afternoon, January 16th. Just got home from work, and we got a little bit of a different job that we're going to make a video on. I got a leaking water main line. And uh, let me show you what happened. Here is my temporary fix. I cannot believe it worked, but I had a tiny little pinhole leak right here about two weeks ago. It, um, we had a lot of rain, and I thought water was actually seeping through the wall. Angel's getting all excited. And I thought water was actually seeping through the wall, so I took all my junk out of these shelves here. Had to remove a shelf here and realize it wasn't seeping through the wall. This here started to leak, and um, let me give you, show you why. This See, this house was built in the late 50s. City water didn't come to this house or up the road that this house is on until the uh, early 90s, and that's when the city water was added. We used to be on a cistern, and that pipe right there is what used to feed from the cistern, which is on the other side of that wall, but we don't use that no more. But here's why it sprung a leak. It did not freeze, as you might think, this time of year. This house has a full basement. As you can see, it's full of junk, typical bachelor slash gearheads basement full of car parts and junk. One day I will turn this into a decent living room again, at least down there where the wood stove is and stuff. But what happened was I removed the shelf here. Let me grab a shelf board and I'll kind of give you an idea. But you, if you took a look at that pipe, you can already see. Well, Angel, you are just under my feet. See, I just got home from work and she's all excited to see me. And she jumped. But this board I just want to show you this, uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll get to my point here in a minute. This board was nailed tightly down here, as you can see. Yeah, it was pinning that down, and um, my point is, back in the early 90s, my uh, parents paid a licensed plumber to install this pipe. This is going out to the city water, which goes that away, and they paid a licensed plumber to do this. Now, a lot of people tell you, don't attempt to do jobs like this yourself. Hire a professional. Um, i got to rant a little bit. Does this look professional to you? See that bend there? You don't do hard car copper pipe that way. You make it go around or you move, remove stuff out of the way. And see that board there? i got to remove that board that it passes through. That's one of the reasons it's bent. The hole that they drilled did not line up. And um, they just shoved it in there, forced it, bent it, and it was also bent and held down tight under here. And and I believe the reason it leaked, started leaking, is it finally fatigued. Now, um, I'll give them credit, it took it 25 years to do it. But, still, does this look like the work of a professional plumber? Look at that dent there. See that? Right there. Alright, there we go, right there. You can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about it, but um, I am not a licensed plumber, so you don't have to call me a professional, but I guarantee you I will do a better job than that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to go out there and shut my water main off, and I, just, I guess I'll do a little how-to video on the do's and don'ts of when you do something like that. And another thing, here's another little thing to gripe about. There's your main shutoff valve. Okay, shutoff valve again, show it to you. Zoom the camera out. And here's where your water comes in. And as soon as I saw that, when I first, after I paid attention to this actual pipe, is, what if I get a leak here? And guess what? I did get a leak there. But um, my temporary fix, it's kind of funny when I realized what it was. Uh, it was late on a Sunday night when I decided to take all the junk out of here because I thought water was seeping in from the wall from a lot of rain. But um, I ended when I found out that my pipe was leaking, it, it made a desperate attempt that actually worked. I wrapped some uh, radiator tape around it, which did not completely seal it. It still dripped around the radiator tape. Then I took this piece of plastic hose here, had to cut it and trim it to where it was a perfect fit around this pipe clamped it tight and it's been dry for two weeks and I waited this long because last week it was down to six degrees and I did not want to get out there and screw around with that water meter in six degrees so okay let's get started you ready to start Angel 
Yes, you are. You don't know what the hell I'm talking about, do you? Anyway, first thing I want to do before I shut my water off is I'm going to shut off my hot water heater so that it will hopefully stay full. And that valve there feels tight and weird. I hope it doesn't do anything. As you can see, at one time it did leak and then the calcium caused it to stop leaking. But I need to replace that someday. Okay, the, this is shut off, and now we are going to need a crescent wrench. We find a crescent wrench, and we're going to have to go out to the meter. Okay, we got to shut off our water meter next, like I said, and it is way out there. We're going to take a little ride in the Ranger and get it shut off. Okay, we're on our way to water meter, and if you can see, Angel is going berserk back there because she thinks I'm leaving her again for the day, and I'm not. But we're just going to pull over here in front of the mailboxes. Yeah, I know my seatbelt isn't on, so what? Set this camera down so I can get my keys out. Alright, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Now, this particular type of water meter cover, there are several different ones. Some have a key, which I thought I had. I found out I don't. I have a five-sided bolt, which is supposed to take a special socket. Here's what I'm going to do. I've already tested this, and there you go. That's how you get in there. To these kind. I think I got it. There we go. And there's my meter. Nice and dirty. Now you got two ways you can shut it off. As you can see down there, there's a shut off valve there. I'm not going to fool with it because whatever amateur plumber with a license did this plumbing, got it tight against there. I don't want to fool with that. So I'm going to do the valve in front of the meter, which a water company may or may not like. I don't care. Let's see, and we'll just get on this flight here. They do make a tool that makes this easier. I, I'm hoping that I should be able to line it up. That has probably a, a safety lock is supposed to go there, and we should be hopefully shut completely off. I'm going to go ahead. And screw this back on. Normally, I would just leave it off, but you don't want anybody to step in it, or you don't want some smart aleck. Coming along and opening your valve back up, you never know. <laughs> you never know. A lot of people have absolutely nothing to do but to ruin your day. So, Back to the house we go. Okay, now that the main valve is turned off, let's confirm that we have turned the right valve off. And there you go. Nothing dead. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up everything because that's what you're supposed to do. Well, no pressure. Okay, we're good. We're not gonna do the hot water heater because we have closed that off. So should be okay there. One other precaution you might want to do if you want to do something like this yourself, just in case the unexpected happens and your water is shut off for longer than usual, has some uh, fill up with some buckets. I got a bucket of water there and there, just in case the unspeakable happens and you end up having to. Maybe you forgot something, maybe something else goes wrong or whatever. And I'm going to shut that valve off over there. And, and that will hopefully keep any water from draining back out. Because I know when you go to sweating these pipes on, uh, that you'll think you get all the water out of your pipes. And when you go to uh, firing up the torch and heating them up, 
it'll steam that heat the pipe up and that water will steam up and you'll get steam in your joint and uh, when you solder them together it won't want to solder good okay now once we cut this loose we're going to knock that board out we don't it doesn't need to be there like I said I waited until I could shut the water off and cut the pipe because I was afraid to mess with that since this pipe could be fragile this board here is going to go it's already loose I have no idea what it was here for. Well, yeah, I do. At one time, there was drywall going across here. And that's what it was for. We don't need it no more. Eventually, eventually someday, I'm going to have like a closet door here, and um, I'm going to redo the basement. But that's not what we're doing today. So we got all our water shut off. I'm going to get me an old garbage can, and we're going to stick it under that pipe before I cut it, so that we'll hopefully, matter of fact. I'm going to do it here. Put it right here. I'm going to cut this pipe right about here. And on the other side, I'm going to cut it, I guess, right. Man, I tell you what, that's beat up right there, too. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to cut it right about there, I guess. Look at that, it's beat up there. I'm going to cut it right about there, and hopefully I can clean that up good enough for it to sweat on. And we're going to put another ball valve right here. Yeah, I think if I cut it right there, I'll be okay. Yeah, right about... Actually, I'll be cutting it as close to that as possible. But there's no excuse for beating on a pipe for a job like this. I mean, come on. And I, like I said, it lasted 25 years, but... If I'd have done it right, I wouldn't be doing this today. Okay, let me put the camera on the tripod and we're going to do some cutting here. And after that, it's a point of no return. We have to fix it. Okay, when I picked up all the buy, copper and stuff at Home Depot, I bought me a neat little tool. It's a ratcheting tubing cutter. First time I've ever owned one. I kind of like it. And uh, as long as you got enough room for this to fit in there, it's pretty nice. But uh, basically, pretty much just like any other tubing cutter, this adjusts for the diameter of your tube. And you just stick it on. Get those wheels on there. And snug that thumb screw up. Make a cut. Snug this one up. Keep going and then cut it all the way through. Hopefully, and there's a little stream of water. There shouldn't be any pressure under this, but there's quite a bit of water. I mean, you're talking probably 400 feet of pipe going out to that field. So, so I'm going to have to put this drain. Proceed any further. Get out of the way. Dig a little bit. Okay, before I attempt to do any soldering, which I haven't cut my pieces yet, first of all, we got a ball valve. I went ahead and took this out in my vise, put my Teflon tape on my fittings. Made sure these are good and tight. Hopefully they will see. And I still got some water dripping out of this main pipe. You could leave that open for days and it probably drip. I'm hoping to evaporate. This is a ground wire, by the way. I'm hoping to heat that up and just to draw any water out that may come out on me. It also reminds me of one thing. I want to get rid of this board real quick. Before that worked okay, and take a shot back to it. 
Because I know that the water that's in there, it's going to come out on me. There is some stuff you could put in there. I was also told to use bread. It will dissolve after a while. Hang on, we got to get that water out of there. Okay, I think we got all the water from coming out of there. Let's see if I'm not in the way here. Let me move this camera over here. Yeah, I know I make terrible videos and I don't like to edit. But, so what? At least you know what's really going on, right? But, um, when you got, especially when you got a dirty old pipe, you want to sand it to make sure it's clean. And just get the dirt and corrosion off of it. You also want to get any burrs that your cutter might have made so that your fitting will fit on there right. Now, gotta constantly make sure. Let me move the camera over here. How about that. Now we need some flux. What we got? Bought some brushes. I'll go ahead and shut my valve off. Well, I'll leave it on for now. Yeah, I'll leave it on for now when I solder this one. Now let me shut it off for that one. I don't know. Just keep water from coming through once it's on. If I hopefully get it on good. One thing I did not check is if my flux is still any good. I've had it for a long time. I guess it's okay. We'll find out. If not, I'll have to go get some more and do it over. But you just want to take your flux and always just put it on the inside of the fitting. Don't know if you should put a lot or a little, but... Um, I'm just spreading what I got on this brush and we'll see what happens. So this is on, yeah, like that, just like that. We'll do that like that. And now I still, I just still need to cut my piece of uh, long copper tubing. Okay, we got the other one soldered. Hopefully, it uh, it will seal. And I thought I saw a little water drip out. I don't know, but uh, like I said, I haven't done any sweating of pipes in a long time, so we'll see. Um, if I fail, I can try again, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get this joint up first. And what I remember, I don't know what this is gonna do to the Teflon tape. Maybe I should have done these separately, I don't know. Let's see. But you want to get that good hot to where... And there you go, we got water, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. Let's see if we can get lucky and get that out of there. Okay, it stopped. I don't know what that's going to do to my flux. We'll try. So if I'm in the way, yeah. I'm just gonna let this flux roll off here. Get it hot enough to where it'll just suck that flux in there or solder in there. And I do have a fire extinguisher handy in case you're wondering. Okay, this one is not wanting to heat up very well. You also see the water coming out of there. Okay, this one. There it goes, starting to heat up. Actually, I saw some solder coming out of the old paint trying to catch on fire. I'm going to 
sure if it's going to seal or not, but we're going to try it anyway. Okay, I do some solder or flux coming out. We'll see. Let's see if we get lucky. This is not looking like a very good solder job, but we'll try it. And there we go. So some solder. We're going to try to run with that. Shut this off. I don't know if it's going to seal or not. We'll find out. started smoking a little bit. We don't want it to try to burn while I, while I go and uh, turn on my water main. Okay, we're going to try to turn it on and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, we just turned the water back on and um, everything looks good. I see no drips. Got some solder, big bubble of solder there, but um, other than that, yeah. It's, uh, I don't see any drips at all. I'm happy with that. I know I didn't sound too confident with my soldering. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've sweated any pipes together. And a lot of times the older pipes got dirt in them and you're, it doesn't take much to keep it from, um, from sealing up. But it sealed up pretty decent. So, um, I guess my project for Friday afternoon is done. I got a little cleaning up to do, but. Hey, I got the most important part done. See that pipe's hanging loose. I might want to anchor it. I am not going to pin it up against here and put it in the bind, though. I don't like that one bit. See how it's pulling that over? It's just going to have to stay where it is. The only way I could actually fix that and not have it in the bind is to uh, go outside, dig a hole, and reroute it through there. And I'm not going to do that. This shelf will go on top of here. And I will probably... Let's see something here. I will probably end up building that shelf up a little higher with another board. I'm going to put the shelf back on, but I'm not going to do what they did and nail that back down tight on there and make it bend. I'm just going to put another board on top of here and have my shelf back to where it was. But it won't be pinching that pipe anymore like it was. So, there that is. Another another job performed by an amateur, successfully done. I didn't pay anybody, no inspections, just got it done. And that's the way it should be. You should be able to work on your own homes. A lot of laws in here. A lot of laws today just to kind of keep you from doing what you want to do, whether you're capable of it or not. But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and... Um, anchor this somehow just so all this weight isn't pulling down on this pipe. That will eventually do something to those joints I think. Maybe. Maybe possibly as a temporary fix cut off a board that is just perfect just to hold that weight. Just like that. I think I had my camera way over here. But yep there it goes. It's sealed up. We now have a valve there. The only danger of it leaking in the house now is if the valve the joint before the valve leaks but at least it's not this big long piece here and we got that junky bent up piece of crap off of there so we don't have to worry about that anymore 
So, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully we can get stuff like this out of the way and get back out in the garage where we belong. I think tomorrow I'm going to get all my firewood that I can fit under those stairs. When all that water came in, I moved all my junk over there. I got engine blocks and everything else over there that will eventually go out in my storage shed whenever I get around to building it, adding the shed to the garage. I think you've heard me talk about it. But I'm going to fill that completely up with firewood so I don't have to be hauling in small amounts all the time. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, hang in there. The videos will get more interesting as soon as we get back out in the garage and get some other things done.